welcome back Soapsters and in today's tutorial I'm going to be looking at doing a modified peacock swirl. Now I'll add a little card here for um, the peacock swirl that I've done previously. There are a number of ways that you can do a peacock swirl um, and this one is a modified peacock swirl which means you're not actually moving the batter into lines but you're basically creating lines through your paw and then going in with your S-curve shape. So a little bit differently, I'm going to take you through the entire process from beginning to end, starting with the um, actual creation of the batter here. Now, this is a slow move batter. It does contain lard um, because lard will move very, very slowly and you need quite a long working time with this. Um, so if you're not into animal products, you will need to find another um, method to create a long, slow um, tracing soap. What I thought I'd do is I'd show you what a... Um, a soap that hasn't yet become an emulsion is not yet emulsified and therefore has not got the um, the bonds linking the water and the oil together. Now, if you look at the stick blender here and if we get it into focus, can you see how it's kind of breaking up on the bell of the stick blender? It doesn't look like it's covering the stick blender and you can still see the metal through it. That soap has yet to become an emulsion and it's not ready to start using. As I start to blend the soap here, can you see how the colour changes? and it becomes much more kind of opaque and it, it, it's you can see that it's now starting to stick together. We're going to give this a nice good blend here, not to over blend it, but just to make sure that all of those molecules are starting to interact with one another and become a batter that's going to be usable for what we want. So if you look at the, the bell of the stick blender here, you'll notice this time when I bring it out, it's it's covered. It's got a nice thin covering. It's not splitting and you can't see through it. That's what we're looking for when we say to get to trace realistically. Now, there are lots of videos out there. Uh, one of the really good ones is from I Dream in Soap. So go over to her channel and check out all of her kind of uh, 101 soaping. Really good channel to have a look at. Now, as far as this goes, um, because I want the trace to be as long working as possible, I've decided to go with citrus essential oils um, and also a little bit of lavender in there just to kind of give me a kind of citrusy lavender smell to it without it kind of being an overpowering scent. Uh, now, a lot of people say that they don't find that their citrus sticks within soap. I have never found that. But what I do is I do make a blend. So I don't just go with one um, citrusy smell. I actually use three or four in combination. So this one is going to have lemon, mechang and lemongrass along with the lavender. So the lavender is a nice soothing essential oil and you can use that in quite a high concentration, although in the UK, you can only use up to 3% of your batch as um, essential oils. And then some essential oils, um, very much like kind of um, peppermint and things like that, will require lower usage rates, okay? But this is going to be a personal bar that I'm going to use at home. Uh, so I'm just going to use the uh, lemongrass, lemon, mechang and lavender in this particular batch. And we're going to get that stirred in. And I know those oils are not going to accelerate my batch too badly. And I'm going to get a really nice working time because it does take a while to lay all of these things down and it's worthwhile uh, taking that time to use it. So for both the peacock swirl and the modified peacock swirl, you realistically do need to use these um, uh, squeeze bottles. And the reason for that is it allows you to pour down lots of nice thin lines um, without kind of, of, of getting yourself into, into a bit of a mess. A lot of people say, oh, it's really hard to clean them and they use ba these um, mailing bags, you know, the big puffy ones you can cut up in there. I actually find these are really easy to clean. I've got a bottle brush that I get in there with, give it a good old scrape out, that everything's saponified. I mean, I find that works well for me. Now, the colours I'm going with, I'm going with three dark and two bright, almost neon ones. So this first one is going to be this beautiful pink colour. Um, and all of these are from Mineral Makeup Supply. Um, and I, I, I did that. Now, the lid for this one didn't fit properly, so I've, I've taped it on just to make sure that it's not going to, uh, to, 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 to come off. I've also got some titanium dioxide in the bottom of that just to create a different colour. Um, so it's a little bit paler. The brown colour I'm using is actually cocoa powder. And I love cocoa powder in soap, A, because it's slightly exfoliating, but also the colour is wonderful. I've got a gold there, a nice kind of rich, dark purple and a nice bright green. So that's my kind of colour scheme for this soap, along with my main soap batter colour, which is white. So I've got all of those going on there and I'm going to give them a good shake just to try and get all of that colour dis dispersed. Now, 
really clever tip for when you're working with um, squeeze bottles. If you actually squeeze the bottle slightly before you put your finger over the top and then shake it, once you remove your, your finger, the uh, suction you've created will draw anything back in. If you don't do that, you tend to flick bits of colour up and around. So that's a good tip for when using squeeze bottles. Now, this particular um, technique, I need to create all of the lines. Um, I'm going to do that by doing what is essentially a wall pour on a slightly angled mould. Now, what that's going to allow me to do is create lots of lines. So when I go to do my modified peacock swirl, I can do it through all of these lovely lines. And basically all I'm going to do is lay down the soap along this wall. So you can see there how I'm basically, now you may, may not be able to see, but I'm basically running that uh, down the wall of the mould. I will mo move the mould around it in a little bit, just so you can see exactly how that happens. So you can see there, I'm just squeezing it down, allowing it to trickle down the wall. And for me, I wanted to get distinct colour variations between all of my stripes of colour. So I'm going in with my plain batter, which is going to come out as a really nice white colour. That's the other thing with a large soap. You're going to get this beautiful white colour at the end of it. So that kind of beigey colour is going to disappear and become beautifully white without any additional titanium dioxide, which can increase the trace. So I'm pouring down the edge of the mould using the bottle. And you can see there, I'm just basically creating stripes of colour. So each of these gets laid down in the mould. And you're basically going to do that. Now, the difference between a peacock swirl and a modified peacock swirl is that in a peacock swirl, what you do is called a non parallel um, line. And what that means is you're going to pull something through all of those layers to create a pattern first before you go in with your S curve. I will bring some more videos out because there's lots of ways of doing this technique in lots of different molds. But essentially, rather than laying down lines, then creating more lines to do my S curve through, you are not doing that non parallel section and you are literally just going in with an S curve at the end of it. So I'm basically here laying down all of my colors in this one mold. I'm going to turn it around this way and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit more of what's going on. So here we go. You can see how I'm just pouring that down the edge of the mold there. And then going back in with my next color. And that's all I'm doing is building up. Now, I do like the squeeze bottles for this because I can control where it goes and I've got a lot more control of it. If I'm trying to do this with a jug, I can't necessarily control how much is coming out at any one time. I'll get different layers going on. And you'll notice that I do go backwards and forwards different amounts. So I'm going back around about 10 times. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, six times on that one. This one. We're going back one, two, three, four, five, slightly less times on that one. We'll then go in with our, let's get a different angle here so you can see again what's happening. Go with our main color again here. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just varying the numbers of times I'm going back and forth. However, I'm always following the same color progression. So I've got the dark brown, the pink, the gold, the green, the purple. OK, so it's dark brown, pink, gold, green, purple, and each line is then interspersed with the white. And I can vary the amount of white I'm using. And what I did find is, as you can see here, I'm getting these kind of little pulls at the end. And that's basically because each end gets a little bit more soap than um, it should really. So what I do in a little bit, is go back into the middle and I basically work on that middle section. This is a long pour and realistically, you do need to be able to control your trace really, really well. Now, as you can see here, the trace I'm using is really quite thin um, and it's allowing me to get these beautiful thin lines and I can lay down a lot of soap and still only get very, very fine lines with it. If your soap is starting to thicken up, you can still do this, um, but I go in with a glass rod, which is a beautiful um, tool for using to do this technique with. Um, and actually, I've even gone in with um, bamboo skewers to do this in some of my later videos that will be coming out this week. But in order to get that um, soap to move when it thickens up, you actually need to use a thicker tool. So I have a range. I go from a bamboo skewer to a glass rod through to a wooden dowel, which is, again, about twice as thick as the, um, the, the glass rod. 
even through to the the um, end of a spoon, which is really quite thick. So if yours is thickening up and you've got this going on, what you really want to do is think about how thick your batter is. And the thicker the batter, the bigger and the wider a tool you need to go through this soap. OK, so that's the main thing with um, with the modified peacock is you don't have to make the lines and you'll see that in the peacock swirl. Again, I'll leave the card up here for you. Um, we're getting to the end of this and I'm, I've, I've lowered the mold a little bit just to allow everything to settle. I'm going to lower it one more time here and put my last little bit of soap in. Now, I did draw a line on the outside of my mold, which is slightly see through, which allows me to get this to a single bar depth. You want a single bar depth in this soap. OK, we've gone to this point and now we're going to start doing our modified peacock swirl. So because I've got the lines going one way, I need to work at a 90 degree angle to that to bring my S curve in. And I'm going to go through with my glass rod and I'm going to create this S shaped pattern. Once I've gone through, I wipe off and then I'll go into the opposite side and I'll create a S in the opposite direction. So we're going one way and then the other. And then we'll go back in at the top. I'm just thinking about where I started and where I need to go. So we're going to go in here and it's going to go that way. And basically we're going to repeat this for the entire mold. And you can see the sort of pattern that's creating now. In a peacock swirl, because you will have basically started there and dragged straight down, and then you can use a comb or a single piece with this, you're creating lots of lines going this way, and then you're going to do your S curve in exactly the same direction, and you get what looks like a feather, um, like the like a peacock tail, basically, which is why it's called the peacock swirl. On this one, we're not necessarily doing that. We're just using these horizontal lines to create that. It's a quicker technique. Um, for me, I think I prefer the other one, but this is this is a wonderful technique to do anyway. And we're going to go through here and create that next little bit. We're making that S curve. And then we're going to go back up to the top here and we're going to create that one again. And I'm using these these very small little curves to create these lines and we're getting this beautiful kind of abstract. And I really quite like that. Um, but I wanted to try and see whether there was anything worth doing for um, just to make these swirls look a little bit more kind of peacocky without kind of overdoing it. So I'm going to go back in at the top here. I'm going to do some bigger S curves over the top of this just to pull them all together beautifully. And now I'm liking that a lot more. One more that way. And you can see how that's just pulling that all down beautifully for me. And start in that corner, do the big curves again. Like that. And then we're going to just go in here. And we're going to do another big S curve in this section here. And there we go. That is the modified peacock swirl. Now let's move on to the cut of this. I preferred to measure and cut with a knife on a, on a block like this purely because it gives me a little bit more control. But what I like to do is just get everything measured out. So this is going to be three um, and I think it's one sixteenth of an inch that I'm cutting these into. So it just it works with my mold. Uh, so all I'm going to do is mark here where I need to cut one there and one there. And then I'm just going to check that I've got those measurements absolutely right, which is good. And then I have a little set square and I love this. This is a little um, jeweler's set square. What it allows me to do is cut absolutely equally to where my. Um, to where my. Uh, right angle is so I can then get that lined up, measured, and then scored all the way across. Excuse the head. And let's score across there. Perfect. And let's score across this bit here. I prefer doing this just because it gives me a guideline. It allows me to get everything spot on and in the right place. And if you look at the bottom there, can you see how my rod actually was on the bottom of the mold and was touching the bottom of the mold to get that beautiful kind of look across the bottom of the mold there. So let's get this one lined up and measured properly. One, two, three and one little bit. It goes there. And then we'll go one, two, three and one little bit there. There are many ways that you can mark this up. This is just my preferred way of doing it. And then let's give ourselves a little line down the middle. Voila. And we've got six bars of soap out of that one pour. So I like doing um, slabs like this because you end up with nice um, even bars. They're quite large. Um, but I'm a, I'm a man. I like large bars of soap in the shower, so they work quite well. So I'm just marking up the edge there so I can see a vertical because I'm notorious of cutting a, a dodgy angle. And I probably even still managed to make this one a dodgy angle 
get my soap in there. It's quite soft, so it's going to cut through nicely. And then I'm sliding the knife and rotating it out that rather than pulling it away, that's going to stop you kind of pulling bits of the soap out. It's always going to stick, but at least this way you can pull it out and get nice kind of cuts there. And there we go. You can see the top there has got a little bit of soda ash on it, but I'm actually just going to slice those bits off to reveal the absolute loveliness underneath. Scraping off palette knives are your friend, I think, when it comes to soaping like this. This is a little bit of soft soap, so that's just going to allow me to scrape up any of those additional bits. And I'm cutting these, and this is where I just made the, I didn't get it ideally straight, so I've got a little bit of planing work to do. That's absolutely fine. So let's pop those ones down. Let's cut these ones again. Lovely. And there we have our soap. Break these bits off here. It's just that the top surface coming away a little bit. Uh, and it's it's soft. I maybe could have waited a little bit longer to cut it, but I need to get it cut and, and out for drying so I can actually bevel the edges and take some photographs of this, which you'll see in a little bit. So I'm just going to tidy this bit up here and we'll bring in my single wire cutter. Um, I think the thing with, with cutters is people often say, what's the best one to get? I've found that I use different cutters for different things to do different stuff with. And, and really, there's no one cutter that you can have above any of the others. But I, quite, I kind of quite like this one. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to shave a very small amount off of the front to give me the right depth of soap that I'm looking for. And also just to take that kind of soda ash off of the top and give me the, the absolutely pristine soap underneath. I'm going to line that up there. I'm just going to line the wire up with where I need and adjust it accordingly. Just put it in a little bit here. I just want to take the smallest slither off, which will roll off like that. And there we go. That reveals the beautiful soap underneath. And I love that. We're getting lots of colours, but it's not overpowering. Lovely white soap. Really love that. And here we have our final soap. And there we go. You can see there all of those striations running through it. It looks absolutely stunning. I think the bevelling works really nicely. And that is a modified peacock swirl. Uh, give it a go. It's a really easy technique to start with. And then if you really enjoy that one, you can crack on with some of the other peacock swirls I'm going to show you in upcoming videos. So uh, stay tuned for all of those ones. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and allows me to make more videos and tutorials for all of you. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when a new video is uploaded. And thanks a lot, Soapsters. I'll see you again next time.